Friends, uh, good morning. I invite you now in the time of lighting the candle as we do the call to worship. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. May the people in their homes right now, especially those who experience experiences of darkness, with this light may they be reminded that you are the light of the world and long for the light into our lives. Amen. Friends, come. Be clean and wash yourselves. Remove all your ugly deeds in the sight of the Lord. Put an end to such evil and learn to do good, to seek justice, to help the oppressed, to defend the orphans and plead for the widows. Friends, peace of the Lord, wherever you are, remain and abide with each and every one of you. If there are any people in your closer proximity, say peace of the Lord be with you. If you're holding a phone in your hand and you want to send someone, um, you know, wish the peace. Say, just text it right now, peace of the Lord be with you. And so, friends, we are in the fourth Sunday in the Lenten season. Today marks the fourth Sunday in the Lenten season. And uh, we have just started the new series of preaching and teaching and learning. And the theme for today is God is just. God is just, and uh, Trevor Hudson is the preacher of the day. Just a few of the announcements for today is that on Wednesdays at half past six, if you can keep an eye into our Facebook page and uh, the newsletter, if you are receiving any newsletter from the Northfield Methodist Church, we have the Lenten Wednesday services at half past six in the evening. The normal Wednesday Holy Communion services in the morning at half eight continues. And this service, in this wonderfully created uh, space, uh, virtually continues as well next week at eight o'clock, same time, same place. Today, for those who are following the news of the church, marks the last day of the hosting of convention, the district convention of the women's manana. Today is the last day. The mothers of faith in the women's manana are busy wrapping up and the service, the closing service will start soon after this service. And so we continue to uphold the district convention in our prayers. Uh, just for information, uh, Louise, she is on fellow. A uh, fellow, as many of you would probably know, that um, it's a time that ministers will take a break and do other things. So it's part of her fellow. She is on fellow in the next uh, two weeks from now. And so, friends, I invite us at this time to continue to pray. Come, let us pray. Dear God of justice, God of peace, God of reconciliation, we come to you at this time in the morning to give thanks to you for your love, for the peace that you have given to us. We woke up this morning and many of us are feeling so refreshed. Lord, we have not missed to see witnesses of your justice and grace in the lives of many people we know and people we do not know. And so, loving God, we ask that you deliver all your people who are lonely and needy at this time of the justice. May the justice that you have for us heal and rescue those who are in situations that demands and require justice. Lord God, may you make us be the voices to those who experience the injustices Loving God, at this time as we are gathered here, you know, in our homes and some of the people, 
experienced recently moments of the injustices. Others in their work, Almighty God, others in their homes and in the communities. We pray, O God of justice, that with our gathering and our worshiping of you, that those who have lost hope for justice, that, O God, as they hear your word this morning, the sense of hope and restoration of justice in their lives will be found by them and discovered. Hear us, Almighty God, as your church, as we are gathered in different homes, in different places, where we know that you reside, Almighty God. Hear us. Hear us, O God. We pray, we pray to you and only to you, God of justice, now and forevermore. In thy wonderful name of Jesus Christ, who's your Son and our Lord and Savior. Amen. And dear friends, now is the time to be led by the worship team as they lead us further into worship this morning. Enjoy the moment of worshiping God in your cozy places. Thank you. Good morning, church. Why don't you join us as we worship together a very just God.
uh, really good to be uh, with you at Northfield Methodist Church again. Uh, some of you may know that we're in a series, uh, The Gift of Who God Is, and uh, today we uh, explore the theme God is just and what that means for our own lives as well. So I want to share with you the reading that was uh, given to me uh, for today. It's from uh, Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 18. I'm going to read the first eight verses. Listen carefully uh, to this parable that Jesus shared. And then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should pray always and never give up. He said to them, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about people. There was also a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. And for some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I, I don't care about God or care about people, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come uh, and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his uh, chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, I tell you, God will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find, will he find faith on earth? And so we thank, we thank God for the gift of that parable and uh, we pray that uh, through that parable uh, God will speak to us today. I want to begin uh, today by uh, making a suggestion. I want to suggest to you that, that hidden within your heart and hidden within my heart, there is a fierce and deep longing. This longing distinguishes us from animals. This longing uh, connects us very deeply with the human family. This longing reminds us that we are created in the image of God. Put, put very simply, uh, this longing that we have hidden in our hearts is a longing to make this world a better place. To make this world just a little bit more beautiful, to make this world just a little bit more compassionate, to make this world a little bit more just. That longing exists in your heart and it exists in my heart. Now, tragically, as we go through life, uh, that longing uh, gets buried. It never finds expression. And there are several reasons for this. Uh, some of us just feel, you know, we're so insignificant, so small. What difference can I make in this big world? Some of us, I, I guess, become a little jaded, a little cynical, uh, very negative, perhaps, about the world. Some of us are, are just so weary and tired and it's very hard for us to think about others. But most tragically of all, I think the, the main reason that this longing gets buried in our lives is that as we go through life, so often our life gets turned in on itself. Just to put it very bluntly, we become self-centered, selfish, self-interested. We want a better world, yes, for ourselves, but we are not too interested 
in about making this world a bit better for others. So it's against this backdrop that I want us to take a very careful look um, at this parable. Uh, it's a parable that's called uh, the parable of the unjust judge and the widow. And I'm praying uh, today that somehow, as we, as we look at this parable, just a little bit more closely, that somehow God is going to stir this long enough that you and I have to make this world a better place. That somehow, as we take a close, closer look at this parable, we will be, we will be uh, re-energized uh, in our own efforts to make this world uh, a little bit more beautiful, a little bit more compassionate, uh, and a little bit more just. So let's go to that, that parable now. And I want to ask you, if I may, just to, to, just to notice a few things. Uh, and as you notice these few things, let's keep our hearts open to whatever God may be wanting to say to us. Will you notice, first of all, and this is important. Notice how different God is to this unjust judge in this parable. The biggest mistake that you and I can make when we look at this parable, the biggest mistake, is to think that the unjust judge in this parable represents God. Nothing can be further from the truth. This judge, we are told, cared nothing for God. This judge cared nothing uh, for people. This judge cared nothing uh, about justice. How different God is. God cares about people. Uh, God cares about justice. God cares about this world. You know, as we read the Bible, uh, it becomes very clear that the God of the Bible, the God that uh, has been revealed to us in Jesus Christ, this God loves this world, <laughs> loves this world deeply. This world is God's first fiancé, and God wants, God, God wants this world to be made new. God wants this world to be healed, uh, to be made beautiful, more compassionate, more just. And God calls you and me uh, to become partners uh, in this dream uh, with God. I've got a sentence in my mind, and I would, I would want to invite you to, to say it with me. But let me give it to you first. You can think about it a bit. And then perhaps we can, we can say it together. And the sentence is this, I am called, I am called to become a partner with God in making God's dream for this world real. Can I invite you right now, wherever you are, can I invite you just to say this aloud with me as I go through this sentence again. I am called to become a partner with God in making God's dream for this world more real. That's the invitation that I want to extend uh, right at the outset. You and I are called into divine partnership to make this world a little bit more beautiful, a little bit more compassionate, and a little bit more just. But let's go back to the parable. Will you notice uh, one quality in the life uh, of this widow? Will you notice her courageous persistence? You know, as you read this, as you read this parable, you have on the one hand, you have this very powerful judge and on the other hand, you have this very vulnerable widow. She wants justice. 
And she just never gives up. <laughs> First, when she comes to the, to the judge, he, he won't hear her request, but we read the parable, we, we see that she keeps bothering him, she keeps, uh, she, you know, she, she keeps pestering him, she, she won't let go of her longing for, for justice. And eventually, eventually in the parable, uh, the judge relents and uh, reluctantly uh, grants a justice to her. The people uh, who really make God's dream real in this world uh, also have this quality. They have this quality of, of a courageous persistence. <laughs> they just never give up. Uh, they keep on doing as much good as they can. They keep on seeking to make this world a little bit more beautiful, a little bit more compassionate, a little bit more just. Uh, one of my own heroes uh, from our own history in this country uh, is Desmond, uh, uh, Desmond Tutu. Uh, I met him for the first time, I think it was in 1979, when I invited him to come to, to Boxburg where I was working then and came to do Bible studies. And uh, just throughout his life, uh, there was this courageous persistence. Uh, he, he just remained confident that God would, that God would, you know, that God would work in the life of our nation. He went through disappointment after disappointment after disappointment, and yet he, he, he persisted in doing good. He persisted in speaking truth. He persisted in acting for justice, however and wherever he could. Now, you can't be Desmond Tutu, and I can't be Desmond Tutu, but also we, with our own small actions, they don't have to be big actions, with our own small actions, actions for beauty, actions for compassion, actions for justice, we can courageously, courageously persist. Will you notice one last thing? Uh, will you notice that uh, if we really are going to share in God's dream uh, and if we really are going to work with God and partner God in making this world a better place, there is one thing, one thing that we will need to do. Uh, did you notice right at the beginning uh, of this parable we read these words that Jesus told this parable so that we would pray always and never ever lose heart. I think those words are very, very important today. When we pray, we, we pray not so much as it were to twist God's arm, to get God to do things in this world. We pray in order that we may never lose heart. <laughs> I don't know, but there's a lot of discouragement, isn't there, in the atmosphere at the moment. People are disheartened, dejected, uh, and somehow, somehow, uh, our, our main line of defense against losing heart, against discouragement, against dejection, is, is to remain in prayer. And I want to suggest today to, to, to keep our prayer of thankfulness alive, particularly. Somehow, it's as we, as, we re, as we remain thankful in our prayer, um, thankful for life, thankful for loved ones, uh, thank you for those small pleasures in life. Somehow, it's, it's that ongoing prayer of thankfulness that energizes us um, to keep on uh, seeking to make this world uh, a better place. Someone once said, if there is only one prayer that you pray, let it be, let it be, thank you. Thank you, God. So let me, let me draw this to a close. Uh, there is a deep longing uh, 
that you have in your heart. That longing is in my heart as well. It's a longing to make this world just a little bit of a better place, just a little bit more beautiful, a little bit more compassionate, a little bit more just. And that is God's dream for this world. Our longing coincides with what God wants. And I'm praying today that somehow through this parable, um, God uh, is stirring this longing up in your life and mine. And that in the days and weeks and months and years to come uh, in our lives, we will become uh, partners in God's dream in making this world more compassionate and more just. So God bless you um, as you, as you uh, reflect too on this parable. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep, able to keep you from falling and present you for